Hello, it's Ruby and today I'm going to be filming an assumptions about me video as you can tell from the title. I do one of these every year and I always try to do it in anti-bullying week and even though this video seems totally unrelated, I think assumptions are a massive part of bullying. Assumptions are also more broadly problematic with regards to discrimination and prejudice and they are incredibly dangerous. It can cause us to distance ourselves from people, stereotype, and I think we have to we have to try and be mindful of the assumptions that we're making. Naturally, we do make assumptions without realizing it. That doesn't mean we should allow ourselves to make these assumptions. We have to question those that we hold. Anyway, I'm gonna answer some assumptions and I asked on Instagram, I've just like screenshotted a few, which I'm going to go through. So number one, uh, you're dating somebody. And no, I am not, I am not in a relationship. And um, this kind of leads on to this next one of you can't date because you're afraid it will distract you from your goals and it's genuinely just I'm just not I'm just not interested in being in a relationship it's just not really on my periphery it's not something I'm thinking about so no it's not that I'm afraid it would distract me from my goals but potentially there is some truth in that because I have other goals I have other things which are important to me which are more important I'm not seeking out a relationship because it would distract me but rather it's just not something that I'm interested in Blakeney is your only friend um, I actually got quite a few like this and I do get comments about this on YouTube as well. This is false, but only just false. Blakeney is pretty much my only friend at university. I have a few other friends that I'll meet up with, um, but Blakeney is the main person I spend my time with and at home I've got my friend Natasha, main person I see, um, some family friends as well. Um, but I really don't have a lot of friends. I'm not very social. I tend to spend quite a lot of time on myself and I don't think that is a bad thing. Again, I spoke about this in the university not being the best time of your life video but we live in an extremely extroverted society like society I think is designed for extroverts the model of like prime friendship prime socializing is very much having a lot of friends socializing a lot is a good thing the more friends you have the better so the more friends you have on Facebook the more often you go out number of people you can invite to a party that kind of makes you not a better person but like kind of a better person. I really don't think it matters at all how many friends you have, uh, as long as you're okay and you're happy with the number of friends you have. Some people like having lots of friends, which is okay, and other people don't like having lots of friends, which is also okay, and I really think we need to reduce the stigma about like not having many friends, as long as you're comfortable with the number of friends and the amount of socialising that you're doing. Okay, next assumption, you come from a well-off academic family. This one is half true. My family is in a financially privileged position, though probably not to the extent that most people would assume, but I am so, so aware of how that has put me in a privileged position. Um, I'm so aware of that privilege. I know that I've been given so many opportunities as a result of that, you know, schooling and education most significantly. Uh, my own room, the ability to like study in a quiet space, I know that that is a privilege, which comes from the fact that my family is financially stable. But the second part of that assumption that I come from an academic family is false. Neither of my parents went to university, none of my grandparents went to university. Um, I'm one of the first people in my family to go to university. Most people in my family left school quite young. Okay, next. You never have those depression, non-activity, unproductive days. Of course I have these days. It's just that I don't film on these days because I genuinely don't feel up to filming. If I'm having a bad day, I don't feel up to filming and so I won't film. Um, but I wouldn't say that they're kind of like, that these days are particularly characterised by me feeling very sad. Uh, they're more characterised by me feeling very anxious. Um, so some days I'll be so, so stressed that I won't be able to concentrate on anything. And so I'll end up just basically sitting there stressing the whole day. But everyone has days like this. And I'm not going to say, oh, it's okay to have days like this. It's not okay that we have days like this because um, nobody wants to have days like that. And it's not fair that people have to feel like that. But it's okay in the sense that you shouldn't feel guilty about it. But I think we can try and avoid this by making sure that we take time to ourselves before we get to that stage, um, because often we get to that state where we've just overworked ourselves too much. You're gonna have to take that time off eventually anyway, but it's so much better to take that time off when you're in a good state of mind, where you're gonna enjoy what you're doing, where you can like put that time aside to read that book or like watch that film you've been meaning to look at for ages as opposed to your um, like your body and brain forcing you to take that time off because you have overworked yourself. And that's something to be mindful of. Um, obviously though, sometimes, it's, sometimes it can seem very unavoidable. We can take steps to make sure we're looking after our mental health and prioritizing self-care, which is so, so, so important. Um, like more important than, more important than being productive. And like ironically, you can't be productive if you don't take that time. And I have realized that over the last few years. Um, I don't think I was so attentive to that when I was younger. 
you don't actually read as much as you say you do. Probably not. Uh, it's really, it's a really hard one to answer actually because when I talk about reading online, when I show myself reading, it's usually when I'm reading. So, so social media will obviously give a false impression of how much I read um, because when I share reading, like the main times I will share reading will be when I'm talking through a long list of like 200 books I'd recommend, doing a readathon where I'm reading like eight books in a day or like showing uh, I did a challenge where I read a book a day. I don't read a book a day and uh, however much I'd love to, I love reading. I don't think I give a false impression in my videos of like how much I love reading. I love reading, but I don't always manage to make as much time for it as I'd want to. I try to read uh, at least once every day for at least a little bit. Um, but last week, for example, I was so stressed about with university and had so much on for university that I didn't read anything apart from my course books. Yeah, just be very mindful. I think like with social media, it's only like a tiny subsection of life which you're seeing. And so when I'm talking about reading, um, it might seem like I'm reading more than I actually am. But keep in mind as well, like if I read eight books a day, I'd read way more than a hundred books in a year. You often watch movies or documentaries. Um, no, this one is false and I wish it were true. Um, I really want to watch more long form content. I feel like there are so many documentaries and movies that I would want to watch, but I have a really short attention span when it comes to long form video content. Um, I just find it really hard to like sit down and watch a whole film. I tend to go more for like YouTube videos. I watch a lot more YouTube than films. If I'm gonna watch films and documentaries, I tend to watch them over a long period of time. So I will like watch half an hour here and there over the course of a week. I just get a little bit bored halfway through. I want to do something else. Um, next, you just focus on aesthetics, not on actual studies. So when I film videos, I do focus more on aesthetics than I would in real life. Though actually, having said that, I think some of my study with me's are incredibly non-aesthetic. So I can see why somebody would assume that I, that I focus more on aesthetics than studying, um, because in my videos, I do try to make them more aesthetic. People seem to like watching the kind of slightly more aesthetically pleasing study study with me's and study setups. And like, that makes sense because I find it motivating too. Like honestly, if I have got a nice study setup, it will help put me in a better mindset. So it's that whole idea of romanticizing your life, which can be problematic, but it can also be very, very, very good for like motivating yourself and making yourself feel positive. When I sit down to work, I'll light a candle and make sure that I just like enjoy the study space that I'm in. That just like motivates me to start working. But then I find that I get distracted by the studying when I start working. Aesthetics can be useful when you're starting a study session just as a motivating force. The studying is is the bit which overpowers. I prefer the studying to the aesthetic of the studying. Like I'll show notes which are, which do look nice, but a lot of my notes look very, very messy and really ugly. Next, you have stage fright. No, I don't actually, I don't think so, not really. Um, but I do get very awkward. Like the other day, we had a photo shoot for the yearly planner, which is coming out this month, which is really exciting. And we got some photos of me with the planner and I was incredibly awkward. Um, so I don't get stage fright, but I get like camera shy, which is ironic because at the moment I'm talking to a camera, but it's different when you're filming by yourself. Next, you never scroll mindlessly through social media. I wish that this was true. I hate that I do, but I, I definitely do. Less at the moment, like less when I'm busier, like with university, for example. During the summer, I found myself scrolling more mindlessly through social media and I did actually film a video on that um, and like trying to fix those habits. It's important to remember that like social media is designed to be addictive um, and it is addictive. I know that I need to keep myself in check with it um, because otherwise I will become re-addicted to it. For me, I just like to make sure that I'm other things to do, which are like my default activities as opposed to just checking Instagram. Also, I have time limits on apps so that I don't spend too long on them. Oh, okay, you cringe at past videos or versions of yourself. Yes, I definitely do. I never used to understand why creators made old videos private, but I've been making videos now for nearly seven years, which is a really long time. The person that I am now is very different to the person I was when I first started uploading when I was 14. Uh, like, if you think about yourself seven years ago, you were such a different person. So I have made some of my old videos private. I recognise that the person I am grew from the person that I was, but the issue with social media is that it makes, it's very, it's egalitarian, it like puts your past self on par with your current self. YouTube won't distinguish between both time periods and both videos will be put next to each other. I'm not sure if this is making sense. Both versions of me simultaneously exist and they can simultaneously be accessed as though they are both the current version of myself. Whereas obviously in real life, like 
the 14 year old version of myself is just in the past and has informed current me but is not like readily available so I'm so I feel like I'm so different from my past self that I don't want that that version of me to be the one that people encounter I have got some old videos still up but some of the ones that I do find more embarrassing and which I don't think like lie in line with the person I am at all anymore um I have made those private and then finally um, you're, this is just a random one, but you're a fast walker. I don't know why this popped into my head. You just have a speedy walker vibe. Yes, um, this is actually true. I walk really fast, but I didn't realise that I walked really fast until about a year ago. And a friend was like, Ruby, you, you just walk really, really fast. So I didn't realise I was like walking so fast. And yeah, so I do. I think it's, okay, this is, this actually feeds into an assumption, which I haven't answered here, but I think people maybe do have me is that, um, I would be on time for things and that I'm like good at being on time for things. But actually, I'm really, really bad at being on time for things. Like I'm notoriously bad. If you ask any of my friends, they'll tell you that I am always late. It's definitely one of my biggest faults. Honestly, I'm so, so bad. And so I think me speedy walking is probably because I know that I have to walk really fast so that I can kind of, because I'm in a rush and I know I'm gonna be late if I don't speed walk. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will leave some anti-bullying resources linked down below as well if you want to um, access any of those. The reason that I continue to talk about bullying on my channel, even though I have left school, is because I don't think it is just a school age issue. Um, I think it is something which continues to happen like in the workplace, in real life it, as adults, but it just stops being called bullying when we leave school. I think it's a much bigger problem than we kind of say it is. And also bullying can massively, massively affect somebody. It, it's strange that people, especially older adults, treat it as something which just happens at school to kids. So that seems like a really unconstructive way of looking at it, um, because it's not a logical necessity, it's not something which has to happen, and so we should go about constructively trying to raise awareness, and we should stand up against it. But thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a productive week. Bye.